you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. There you go. When the Iron Lady sings it, that's when you know it's official. Welcome to the big show, my family and friends. We certainly appreciate you being here. Remember, the Chris Voss Show is the family that loves you but doesn't judge you, at least not as harsh as your mother-in-law, because she didn't like you anyway. And uh, you know what I'm saying. So anyway, I, I know exactly what you're saying, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Wait, is 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 your mother-in-law the one that ca- keeps calling you in the show? Is that what's she going is, on? She, yeah, that's her over and over and over again. How are you, Chris? I am excellent. Welcome to the show. Bill Carnes is going to be joining us on the show. You can hear him chiming in the background. And we'll be talking to him about his company, Carnes & Carnes, personal injury and accident attorneys. Some of the stuff that he does and some of the stuff you can look out for and be knowledgeable on your way through life as you wander through it in the meantime go to goodreads.com for chess chris foss linkedin.com for chess chris foss chris foss one on the tiktok and he subscribe the big linkedin newsletter the hundred thirty thousand linkedin group over there and uh, i think that's it chris foss facebook.com he is a gentleman who is an attorney I'm Thank stalling. you, by the way, for gentlemen. I appreciate that. You know? I know. We we do that for everybody <laughs> in the show. We we tell everyone that we Well, oh, no, I don't feel right? special anymore. Everyone gets the gentleman tag, huh? Oh wow, well, yeah. There you go. Well, you you you've you've learned our secret. You've uncovered it. I, I, I cracked under I cracked under questioning. Yeah, there's uh, a, there's in depth, you know, intense cross examination <laughs> from this counselor. Right? I gave up pretty easy. I don't want to go to jail. So Bill Carnes, as you can hear, specializes in litigating major personal injury cases involving car accidents, motorcycle accidents, train accidents, wrongful death, premises accidents, slip and fall accidents, unsafe products, unsafe medical devices, bad drugs. Wow, I could have called him for some of that when I was younger. Construction site accidents, pedestrian accidents, boat accidents. Insurance, bad faith, traumatic brain injury. He's also litigated cases involving breach of contract, fraud, and business torts. I wonder if he. I wonder if he also litigates birth accidents. Welcome to the show, Bill. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And the answer to that last question is yes. I have done plenty of birth injury cases. Oh, oh birth please. injury cases. Yeah. I'm, I'm. I'm talking about the ones where you know you end up on Maury. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, I am the father. What's going on there? I thought. I thought that vasectomy was working. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, I go and I do a deep dive on like Maury reactions just to laugh. Like, Best Maury, you are the father reactions. It's yeah. classic. I do that with cops. If I ever get depressed and I'm like, God, my life sucks, <laughs> I'll sit and watch cops for two hours. And by the time after two hours, you're like, my life is awesome compared to these people. Yeah, that is hands down <laughs> one of the greatest reality TV shows to this day is cops. I mean, I haven't watched cops in a long time, yeah. but gosh, it is. When I was a kid, it was it was the first reality show. It was the best. Oh yeah. I yeah. wish there was just a segment where it was just tasers 24/7. That's my favorite <laughs> part, the tasers. See, I see I'm too young. I mean, I, well, I, you know, I, I haven't watched cops in heck 20 20 years or something. Yeah. So I missed all the taser. You know, there were no tasers back then. There's cops. Oh, yeah. and, you know, we by the way, we also sue. We sue cops. <laughs> so uh, now they I mean, back then they just shoot you. They still do that now, but every once in a while you get yeah. tased. Yeah, especially when the guy doesn't have a shirt on. It's always the guy doesn't have a shirt on in the mobile home when they show up. That's why if the cops ever show up at my house, I make sure and put a shirt on and make sure I'm not wearing a wife beater too. So because <laughs> that's the guy who always goes. So give us your yeah. dot coms. Where can people find you on the interwebs? Cards and cards dot com. There you go. Give us a thirty thousand overview of what you guys do in your words and how you do it. And I know you have a lot of locations as well. Yeah, I mean we're in uh, California, Nevada, and Texas offices throughout. And uh, basically, you know, primarily what we do are auto accidents, slip and falls, but major catastrophic personal injury cases. And a 30,000 foot overview is, you know, we sue people. We sue insurance companies. <laughs> That's a 30,000 foot. We're attorneys who sue people. We're attorneys, God forbid, who sue people. Yeah. I tell you, you know, uh, we like to categorize ourselves a little differently than the personal injury firms that you see on the billboards or radio or TV because mm-hmm. we kind of. 
although we do a lot of marketing, we started off totally, totally different than those kind of, you know, heavy marketing firms. It's, it's definitely a little different. Yeah. So what got you into law? What made you want to become attorney? What was your journey growing up and, All right, so, and who hurt you? Yeah. Right. <laughs> My dad was a heavy influence on both my brother and I. My brother's my partner at Carnes and Carnes. We both started the firm together. And uh, our dad, we asked him the same question growing up because we didn't, I, neither of us knew what we wanted to do growing up, high school or anything like that. I said, Dad, what, what do we, uh, you know, how, how did you become a lawyer? He goes, well, because medical school was too long and, uh, and I was too dumb for medical school, and, but I wanted to be in school. And that's what he said. So that was kind of influential. And so growing up in school, we always kind of tried to keep our options open. And then we went to, we both went to law school. We both started liking it and the rest is history. There you go. Law is an amazing field. I, if I could go back, I started my first company 18. If I could go back, I'd tell people I'd, I'd get a law degree because it's so, it's so pliable in so many different fields that you can use it in, you know? Yeah. You know, what people are doing a lot is that JD MBA. That's not a bad move. A JD, a JD MBA. MBA? Yeah, they do a, a a joint, you know, master's in business, you know, business school basically. In oh, really? School. And you do it at the same time, it's four years instead of three. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people do that. I hear that from a lot of lawyers that they wish they did a JD MBA. Yeah, because they don't teach business in, in to to lawyers, right? No. Yeah. Not at not at all. They don't teach you how to do law. They don't teach you what to do inside a courtroom. They just teach they you Latin. Yeah, 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 right. And then they, they, and then if you mispronounce the Latin, they yeah. say, "Oh, you mispronounce that." It's like, how do you know? It's a dead language. You got no idea. <laughs> like, and then they, then you're labeled a smart ass, and you know, you just got to get out of there, take the bar exam, establish yourself in the practice at that point. <laughs> there you I go. Mean. I think Kim Kardashian is still trying to pass it. I don't know. She did. Yeah, the time. the baby bar. Like 20, 20 times or something. Uh -huh. But I, I've lo I loved. I well, I had to fall in love with the law because once you become, you have a lot of companies and stuff. You get a lot of shakedown lawsuits and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, then you're suing people and they're suing you. And I've learned that it's how the rich do war. Like in the old yeah. days, you know, kings would just do war and battles and you'd send people over to kill each other and murder each other. And now in a modern society, the war is done through courts and attorneys and, you know, it's, you just, the, it's the modern day sword for the, for the rich. There I mean, you go. Uh, it, those types of cases, things like that certainly dominate the headlines, but they don't dominate the courthouses. I can tell you yeah, that. And they true. don't, I mean, like, you know, we represent regular people, mm -hmm. people that need us too. They really need mm -hmm. lawyers. What you're talking about, people need to screw over other people. Yeah. Uh, or want to do that. Yeah, I don't I don't do that. And the beauty of the law too is you know, you look at our constitution, you look at our nation of laws and and uh, it, it's really interesting to me how all of it evolved from it. So, yeah. you know, there's a what's the old saying? No one thinks they need an attorney. No one likes attorneys or thinks they need an attorney until they need one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's there a good go. one. There you go. And the last kind of lawyer you ever are going to want is a lawyer like me. You never want a personal injury lawyer. If you go your whole life without ever knowing a personal injury lawyer, that's a yeah. good, that's a good life. That means that something hasn't befallen you that has uh, equated you to an industry, an injury. That's so right. how do you tell us what sort of clients you help in, in some of the things that you do and, and uh, you, you know, why, why is it necessary for to have a personal injury, injury lawyer? What do we need to look out for? What sort of things are we getting into that we need one for? Interesting, you know, there, there's a couple of ways to attack that mm -hmm. question. The reality of just life, you know, people get hurt and other people are responsible for it. And there's medical mm -hmm. bills, there's, you know, there's issues, there's pain, there's broken bones, and there needs to be compensation as opposed to an eye for an eye. You talk about the Constitution, English common law, etc., and how that, you know, all you know, evolved from that. But um, how we came about and how, you know, people wonder why there's a bunch of, oh, there's PI lawyers everywhere, there's TV commercials everywhere. And the reason is, is because insurance companies are so cheap. Yeah. So if insurance companies treated people fairly, then there would probably be a lot less personal injury lawyers. So, you know, cause and effect. We are a yeah. little bit of the product of what's going on in the insurance industry. They're, you know, exceedingly cheap, always have been. I think they've gotten a lot worse during tort reform in the '90s, early 2000s, and mm -hmm. uh, you know you're, you're the the billboards you see driving down the road. You're you're in Vegas. Forget about it. Every time I go to Vegas, I just went to a game at Allegiant. <laughs> you can't you can't go five feet without seeing a PI injury billboard. You know. Yeah. 
So yeah, I think just um, knock on the cars in traffic, knock on the <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. A decent gust of wind blows that billboard right <laughs> over. On there. Yeah, so I mean, I think a little bit of it, it, that's that's what you're seeing in terms mm -hmm. of what we do. We're not a huge marketing type firm. We don't have thousands and thousands and thousands of cases. We try mm -hmm. to help people and try to kind of give a personal to you know attention to them. We're a family law firm, mm -hmm. and uh, we try to treat our clients like family as well. Do you treat your brother as well as the rest of your uh, clients? <laughs> uh, You're my, joking about your brother. And I love my brother so room. much. People <laughs> people ask me, what's it like practicing with your brother? I'm just like, <laughs> no, it's great. Mike and yeah. I definitely see eye to eye on virtually every single issue. And That's awesome. And whenever we do disagree, it never gets heated or anything like that. We just start laughing about something. See, my man, me and my brother, we we fought a lot as kids. So I don't think we can ever work together. So I'm glad you yeah. have a better relationship than we do. How many um, how many how many siblings do you have? I had three and but we're just one brother and two sisters. Gotcha. And you know, and so the brothers, you know, I don't think I don't think it's ever left the two of us of being I don't know, at each other, but that's another yeah. story. If, we, we still, we still do that too. I mean, and that's healthy of, of, yeah. you know, because it drives both of us. It's, it's competitive and it's, there you it's go. Fun. I mean, there you go. but you do be all, you know, Arnold and Danny DeVito and twins yeah. just hugs and kisses. It can't be, I mean, come yeah. on. The problem it's is if you get in a fist fight, who sues who to for damages? Well, he kicks, <laughs> I'll tell you, he kicks my ass cause he's tough. Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. He's strong and tough. I'm kind of a wuss in that regard. Uh, there you go. Yeah, well, hence, the, hence the practice of law. Yeah, just tire attorneys and have them work it out. Don't don't be fist fighting. So you guys have an award winning service, no fees until you win. Yeah, experience you can trust, and over one thousand five star reviews. That's pretty awesome. I notice you guys also cover uh, bad drug lawyers, so I can yeah. call you if I get a bad bag of meth. And yeah, uh, it's not. Really just not those types of drugs. Oh. If you're getting the bad, you know, dime bag or bag of, you know, blue <laughs> ice, that's probably going to be on you. If <laughs> Pfizer gives you a bad drug, you might want to give us a call. Oh, oh yeah. it's that kind of bad drug. That kind of bad drug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell the voicemail I left at Kearns and Kearns uh, said, <laughs> yeah. forget about it. Disregard. I Speaking of cops, as we were joking about earlier in the show, I don't know if you've ever seen that there were different episodes on cops where people actually did that. They flagged down a cop car and they're like, hey, I yeah. bought some crack at that crack house in the yeah. corner and they gave me like, like, I don't know, baking soda and I <laughs> yeah. want you to go get my money back. And yeah, I'm I got like, ripped off by that drug dealer. Yeah, and they're like, are you for real? You, yeah. You know, my you brother and I were once talking about like, what's the dumbest thing you can do and, uh, you know, or say to a cop. And uh, that that's got to be right up be, there is yeah. say, hey, you know, I, I got ripped off by this drug dealer. Yeah. Or, or hey, I can't get this knife out of this guy I murdered. Can you guys help <laughs> yeah. me? I got yeah. a, you know, a good place to bury a body at all. <laughs> I got a couple extra bags here. I don't know. <sighs> yeah. You know, you, I know you guys see a lot of murders, so you guys should know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I need some good advice. How to bury the body. <laughs> So what do you think sets you guys apart as uh, personal injury and accident attorneys than, than other firms? One, we actually litigate cases. Oh. So there's a couple of things I talk to our clients about when they're trying to select a law firm. And I'm saying, hey, you've heard of those big time lawyers. Ask them if they've ever tried a case. Mm. Every lawyer in our, in our office, every single lawyer in our office has tried multiple cases mm -hmm. to jury verdict. And uh, not many law firms can say that because you know, the guys that you see on the billboard, all those guys on the TV, et cetera, they're marketers, they're business guys. They're not wow. actual lawyers. So when I started off, I mean, I carried another guy's briefcase, you know, another lawyer's briefcase who was a really good trial lawyer. And I tried his worst cases mm -hmm. um, and then became a partner at that firm and then started this firm with my brother. And so when you, you know, we try cases, so we know what the defense argues at trial. We know how to counter those arguments. We, we just kind of know more about what happens when you finally get to that ultimate stage of a jury trial. And remember, when you get to it, people are like, oh, you're, you're a lawyer. They think all you do is what they see on TV, which is try cases. Mm -hmm. I mean, that in the life of a case, that's the last 5% time-wise of case or, or less, yeah. you know, far less, potentially. So, uh, but when you are experienced in that, you know, the area of trial and you see what the defense does and what insurance companies do, it helps you kind of prepare for that. So it sets us apart from those other law firms is we're actually in, you know, we're in the trenches. We're fighting mm -hmm. the fight. We, we don't take cases and send them to other plaintiff's law firms. We don't do any of that. We take our cases ourselves. We hold them ourselves 
and we take it all the way to trial if need be. There you go. I know other, those I know. other firm, those other firms that you see on the side of it. I don't know. You ask, <laughs> hey man, that name on the uh, billboard if they are still, you know, part of your firm. Can I talk to them? Do they try cases? Yeah. I remember there was an there was an attorney firm. I won't say what city it was in, but let's say it's close to where I live. And they were one of these attorney firms who, I guess, what they do is they do massive marketing and they just yeah. recruit a bunch of attorneys and spin out cases to them like a referral service. Oh yeah, but but they're an attorney firm themselves. But the head lead guy that people saw on TV like all the time to a point you almost knew him in every follicle right. on his head, and he would do the you know those funny weird commercials, but. I guess one time he was just partying too hard and enjoying his life. He didn't show up for a murder case, which was kind of a big deal because the guy was up for murder. And uh, yeah, that wasn't a good time for him. So it's probably good to have, you know, people that aren't just marketing guys. I've heard of this guy. <laughs> yeah, I, know I think you know who I'm talking about. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I think you do. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, so that's why you want good trial. Yeah trial yeah, well, and then like the, the other thing too it's like you know we care we care because we're not a huge behemoth law firm mm -hmm. uh, so you know we have the time we have the resources to care i mean the the business model that we have and every law firm has a business model whether they like it or not whether they whether they anticipated it to be that various model or not or that particular mm -hmm. model model or not but business model that we have allows us to give our clients personal attention there you go so, I mean, it's a, uh, you know, no one's, you know, we are overstaffed. No one's overworked over here. We try to maximize value on every case. There you go. We're, not, so, we're not, you know, hoarders of a whole bunch of cases. <laughs> I mean, there's some, some law firms out there, they treat their clients, you know, it's like widgets. Oh, we have 10,000 yeah. cases. Like you got 9,999 pissed off clients, my man. You're actually going to show up for my. Yeah. You're going to be there for murder one or, or not. Right. <laughs> that was. That's kind of, you know, the judge is like, this is a guy who has his life on his line. It could be on death row. And you just, do yeah. you just, where were you? You were off on a sabbatical smoking, I don't know, ketamine. I don't know what he was doing. It sounded like he was in one of those sweat huts or something. You stick, yeah, stick to the commercial. Know. Yeah, stick to the, stick to being the TV. But yeah. uh, so any advice for people out there that should be calling you when they get in an accident, some sort of injury? You know, there's all sorts of, sometimes the insurance company will run out and try and get you to sign something really quick or, yeah, you sort of know, uh, from you, et cetera, et cetera. The, the classic <laughs> things that we say are if you get into a crash, mm -hmm. check in with your body, make sure you're okay, make sure your car's in a reasonably safe spot, mm -hmm. um, exchange information, and then go to the ER or an urgent care to get checked out, even if you're not feeling all, all you know, that banged up. Mm -hmm. And then call a lawyer. Don't be chatting with your insurance company. Don't be chatting with the other guy's insurance company. Don't be in a situation where you're going crazy, yelling and screaming at the guy. Can you believe what you, you know what I mean? You know, don't yeah. turn into, into a road rage incident. Yeah. And then, you know, really try to calm down, check in with, you know, check in with yourself, especially once that adrenaline dies down, you start feeling the effects of, of an actual accident. Yeah. I mean, much of the much of the conversations I have with clients that have just been into an in an accident is talking about injury potential, brain injury, you know, what happens in the spine, et cetera. And I can have long, distinct conversations with people. And, you know, during the course of that conversation, you get the clients say, oh, yeah, you know, I do feel that. Actually, I thought that was, you know, something else or whatever. It's like, no, that tingling in your foot could be from your low back. Mm -hmm. uh, could be a disc, you know, a lot of things like that happen. So. Uh, I tell people, get to the ER, tell them every kind of symptom that you have, and then call a lawyer. There you go. And that's really important. I mean, I've been rear-ended before. A lot of times, you don't feel, you know, the real impact of it till two days later. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, wow, holy yeah. crap. It takes kind of a while to kick in. And I think sometimes you're in a little bit of shock. And Yeah, it's that but, adrenaline. That adrenaline goes, yeah. and, you know, you get your, your fight-or-flight type stuff, and you get all pumped up, and... Mm -hmm. Once that subsides and also inflammation builds up from injury, it doesn't happen like that. Yeah. I mean, if you bang your knee, uh, that swelling doesn't happen immediately. It can happen over time a little bit. Over, and that's the same thing that happens internally yeah. in, in the structures in your spine, brain injury, et cetera. So, yeah, you got to really, you know, check in with yourself. Don't just brush it off thinking that you're fine. There can be a lot of kind of hidden things. And I got rear-ended by, we were we were kind of in traffic, so we weren't moving that yeah. fast. But the gal had turned 
to her baby was in the back seat. She turned around to play with her baby, and you know we were doing that start and stop traffic stuff, and she hit me pretty hard. And uh, I remember the I was kind of surprised because the insurance company was like out like right away. Hey, hey we'll come out. You know, right. we'll help. We'll get you taken care of. And then when she showed up. Was it your insurance company or hers? No, her and her insurance yeah. company. Yeah. Sign here. They, Here's two hundred bucks. Sign the bodily injury. They wanted me to, yeah. and they wanted to take a statement from me. They right. wanted to do a recording and sit down with me and take like a full accountability. And I remember right. saying to her, "I'm like, would my attorney recommend that we have this conversation right now?" Yeah. No. And she's like, "Gotta be honest with you, probably not." Yeah. And uh, I was like, "Well, then you can go." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're always trying to minimize cases. I mean, even your own insurance company, like, well, I gave a statement to my own insurance company and uh -huh. they'll like, once you have a statement, an insurance company will share with the other insurance company, or you might have an uninsured uh -huh. motorist coverage where your insurance will pay you if the other guy doesn't have insurance or not enough insurance. And yeah. they'll use what you say to your own insurance company against you. Wow. Evaluating that claim. Yeah. And, and they, they, say they do clever, too. Yeah. They do clever things too. The, you know, so uh, did you get that hurt? Just kind of minor kind of bumps and bruises. You know, they'll lead you to what they want to hear. Uh, yeah. You know, what the Meeting insurance questions. company wants to, you know, will basically devalue your claim. So they had all those little tricks and it's just, you know, they're, they are not your good neighbor. They're not your friend. You're not in good hands. You know, <laughs> but you know what the interesting thing though? Mm. Don't, don't people know this kind of, I feel like people you know would this. think. But I think a lot of times you're you're kind of in shock. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I've 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 had little car accidents. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Now? Am I supposed to call the yeah. cops or right. what's the procedure? And you know, it's a minor. But how much is it when the co we really got to call the cops? And like, yeah. you know, you just kind of you go scramble head because yeah, you just right. you just don't. Uh, you know, we we had that happen a lot with our commercial vehicles. And stuff. you know, another thing that I see a lot is uh, like the crash that you were in. You mind if I ask you a couple questions? Sure. So was it, it was like, now would my like, attorney recommend that I answer? These <laughs> yeah. Right. You're not on the record. You're okay. <laughs> was there a lot of damage to the back of your car? I know it was stop and go traffic. No, it was, the, it pushed the bumper and wrecked the bumper. It was yeah. a BMW. So it was a nice yeah. car. How did but, it feel? How did it feel though for you? Did, were you surprised to see the amount of damage or lack thereof? I, I mean, like, she hit me pretty hard. It, it, it slammed my head back and I got a little bit of whiplash because yeah. I was sitting forward and I, I really didn't expect it. Normally yeah. I, I'm kind of keeping track of what's going on, but when you're in start and stop traffic, you don't really, you're not expecting to get hit a wood of light. Yeah. You're not, yeah. You're not prepared for it. So my head did pop back and my neck right away. I, I knew to put ice on my neck and I started icing it. And by the second day I was like, it's a good thing I iced the fuck out of that. Yeah. yeah. By the second day, don't, you you can change that testimony in the future if you need to. You know. What I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get. It. We get clients all the time. They get banged, you know, pretty hard, and then they look at their bumper, and there's not that much damage, and there's bumper rebound, and and mm -hmm. people think, well, bumpers are soft. It's a soft component of the vehicle. It's not. It's the exact yeah. opposite. You know what I mean? It's so. Yeah, we see a lot of situations where clients are shocked about the small amount of property damage to their vehicle. And then when you take, when, when you actually, you know, the state farm or whoever will come out and, you know, take a look at the car, oh, some scratches on the bumper. And then if you do a breakdown investigation of that car, you'll, you know, the bumper gets pushed in and rebounds back, but then you take it off and you look and there's damages, there's damage to the internal structures and even frame mm -hmm. damage that is just totally ignored by the adjuster. And car parts are like so crazy expensive nowadays. So I got I remember, I, I remember one time I my BMW we had a whiteout. I was in Park City with it, and we had a whiteout. And the they hadn't come done the road, and I we totally got lost as we were driving, and, mm. and basically drove off the road. Thankfully, you know, I just slid through a pile of snow to a stop, but it did enough damage to the bumper. The bumper looked fine. Yeah, but. Um, and so when they towed it out, I was like, okay, well, shit, I guess, you know, the snow did everything. But then when we took it in the shop, all, there was all this honeycomb that's under there and all this yeah, yeah, yeah. structure and it was all wrecked. And yeah. so it, it looked fine from the outside, it had a couple scratches, but yeah. So you just never know with cars and parts and stuff. And then your body, I've had friends that have had accidents where they've had damage to their spine and they'll settle. And then years later, they'll start having, you know, the degenerative nature of, you know, once you 
destroy one vertebrae and it starts riding yeah. and sitting wrong then you know then you're fusing everything and then that makes it worse and and i'm like yeah. dude you shouldn't have settled that lawsuit dude that was crazy man yeah adjacent yeah. level syndrome or junction syndrome mm -hmm. is what you're talking about yeah, yeah it's uh look the spine i mean the human body is very 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 fragile and uh, like you say if you injure one part and there's an acute injury i mean the surrounding structures can basically erode degenerate faster it's a mm -hmm. you know, like it gets nasty it's sad yeah and it's getting worse there's more car accidents now people are really dinking around on their stupid phones like, oh, it all the time phones. yeah yeah. And then pedestrians are getting hit more. There's more death cases. Yeah. There was a little bit of a lull with COVID, but it's it's you know, it's still trending in the wrong direction. I have a I have a close friend who's an attorney and he does a lot of wrongful death suits from people yeah. who are on their phone yeah. and you know, drove through somebody. And you know, people just they're they're I don't know, they're just on their own private Idaho. We had we work with AT and T a lot and review a lot of their phones over the last years and yeah. And, uh, I've seen that on your videos, yeah. yeah. And they there was a movie they did with one of the famous Hollywood producers like five, six, seven, eight years ago, and and they had done a documentary where they went on and interviewed people who ended up killing people and uh, accidentally because they were on their phone. Yeah. And uh, you know, they did this big PR put the phone away campaign and and they probably need more of that because literally I, I'm at the point now from what I've seen and heard enough of that, like before I cross into a, an intersection, I'm looking both ways to make sure the cars are stopping and someone yeah. is just on their phone. I'm, I, I wouldn't call myself paranoid about it. I'm just kind of aware. Like I just yeah. look and I go, is everyone coming to stop? And we're going to blow through this light right into me. You know, Dude, I'm I'm paranoid. I'm paranoid at this stage. <laughs> I mean, when you stop when you stop at a stoplight and you just look to your left or right, I mean, like yeah. everyone. I mean, like, what what everyone's on their phone. Yeah, yeah. It's so, just, I mean, it's, I did. I started deleting. I, I you know, I I got into the habit a little bit of probably checking my phone too much, and I deleted. This was years ago, mm -hmm. before it became cool. Deleted Facebook. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I don't have Instagram or anything like that or TikTok, but you're living I know I probably life. shouldn't be saying this on a podcast, but whatever. I mean, no, it's fine. Truth. You're living the life, man. You're free. You're yeah, free. it's nice. And my, my, I have a five-year-old girl, five and a half. Oh. <laughs> and I've always said to my wife, look, dude, this, this broad, she's going to have a flip phone. She doesn't even know. She's going to hate <laughs> me. She is going to hate me. She's going to be like a pager. What? So this was just last night. She goes, daddy, I want a phone oh, at no. five and a half. Oh, I said, sorry. "Oh man, this is it. This is how it starts." She go, "What are you? What are you talking about, Daddy?" Because uh, this is how it starts. You are you and I. We're going we're gonna to be at each other's throats. And, oh wow! You know, until it's you know, I mean, till the end on this, you're, you're going to be the last person with the phone. And she goes, "Oh, I love you, Daddy." And she oh, gave me a hug and kiss, and that oh, was it. So she knows yeah. she already knows what she's doing. Buttering all me. changes when they become teenagers. Just I know, that, buttering yeah. me up. So, <laughs> she's been working yeah. she's oh, gonna yeah. go she's gonna talk to mom about a phone now but yeah. you know i mean it, social media has really been destructive to young people yeah and i think i think there's a lot of states suing facebook and other places and and it really has become just the the pandora's box that we've opened it, it's yeah. the most culturally destroying mentally destroying people with depression yeah. it, it really affects young girls a lot too and just the delusion that's out there i mean down to your place in LA, you know, you can pay sixty bucks to go have pictures taken in a studio that look like you're in a, right. a in, in a private plane and you're living the life. And so, all these young kids are growing up like, why can't it be like him? How come? Yeah, I, that's you know? cool. That's cool. It's a joke. Yeah. It's really yeah. bad. It's really sad too. I kind of weep for the future, but you know what? Every single generation has said that about the you know, <laughs> for since the dawn. You know, I mean, we you know, we were when we were apes you know barely off the tree they were saying that so yeah, yeah. i think it's hard I, I i just think you just gotta i don't know i just try yeah. to hug my kids as much as i possibly can and say don't worry about it and you know do you use that yeah. line weep for the future from uh, the ferris bueller movie <laughs> that was, that was, a, was that a reference to that <laughs> yeah that's yeah. the principal right you know i was that principal for halloween one year <laughs> were you? Uh, yeah and i was yeah. with you know the 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 cool guys of the group were of course ferris bueller and cameron fry yeah but That's I, one of my favorite lines to do when, yeah. when the Gen Z years are acting up. I'm like, I weep for the future. I weep for the future. Yeah, we haven't even talked about legal mo movies at all. What's your favorite law movie? You know, any oh, kind of, 
I, I would say it comes to mind. I would say, uh, who's, who's, is it my cousin Vinny? No. Is it my cousin Vinny? If you talk to any lawyer, yeah, it is that yeah. actually, you know, tries cases. Mm -hmm. My cousin Vinny is hand down, hands down yeah. the greatest, you know, most accurate legal movie of all time. Is it? It's accurate. Wow. There it's, you go. It's very, I mean, for when you're comparing it against other movies that where there's courtrooms and uh -huh. it is, it's as good as it gets. There's what not, about Perry Mason? My mom loves Perry Mason to this yeah. day. She watches it like five hours a day. Did so, they remake Perry Mason? Uh, I don't know what she's watching, but she, I'll go in and she's watching Perry Mason when I visit her. And, and is she, it the old just, school Perry Mason? I think she's got both because I've seen it in black and white and in color. That's so spectacular. So, but she loves she loves Perry Mason. Hey, uh, what about Ben Matlock? Don't forget about Matlock. I don't know if she's into Matlock. I'll have to ask her next time um, I see her. But I remember I watched Matlock when I was a kid. I was yeah. a big Andy Griffin, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I grew up watching what was the Andy Griffin show? Yeah, there you the go. Andy Griffin show. Yeah, but uh, that's interesting. And then of course, there's the famous lines from the uh, from the movie with Tom Cruise and. You can't handle the truth. You That's can't a, probably the a big truth. lawyer movie. I don't know. Yeah, a few good that. men. Wait, a few yeah, good yeah, men. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that was a good a great one. Thing. Yeah, the on the my cousin Vinny, we mm -hmm. at my office pay a little homage to it. Our and this will mean nothing unless you really know the movie. But our Wi-Fi is Jerry Gallo, and our Wi-Fi <laughs> password is Jerry Callo. And if you're wondering what the hell that means, go watch that movie. And it, you know, it's at the end. We'll get there you fun. go. There you go. When, when she gets on the stand and she starts <laughs> popping off in her Jersey accent, oh, like so all the car parts, it's so it's good. like the best. It's so good. Marissa like, Tomei, she won an Oscar for that. Yeah, she was yeah. just so great. She just starts popping off, and yeah, yeah. And it was great to see. Wasn't he one of the Munsters, the judge? Yeah, he was so the, grew, the the you know yeah. lurch, but you know the Munsters they were named. I forget <laughs> what his name was. Yeah. he yeah. just died. He just passed away too. He was a oh, great judge bad. in that too. Yeah, he was he he was a great. I wish I would. I, I remember watching the movie. Think God, he should be in more movies. Yeah, but uh, I grew up watching the monsters and all that sort of stuff in early seventies stuff. So anything we haven't touched on, I should ask you about, or we should talk about. Yeah, man, what whatever. You guys do. Tons of stuff, but no, it's all good. Sure. We've had a good chat. There you go. So give us your final pitch out to people on how they can onboard with you guys, reach out to you guys, do a free consult consult. Yeah, I mean, any, yeah, anytime that you call us, you're not you're you don't have to pay a dime. We mm -hmm. don't we you won't get a bill from us or charge from us ever. We work on contingency. So you got any kind of legal issue, you've been in a car accident, anything anything like that, give Carnes and Carnes a call. There you I go. like to say sometimes on our videos, hey, call K and K. Call K and K. I know you guys are a proud sponsor of the Wounded Warrior Project, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. We do a uh, Wounded Warrior. That that project is kind of interesting because we we partner up with Four Paws for Patriots and Wounded Warriors. So when a service dog is needed by a vet, Wounded Warriors mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily just give them a service dog. That has to come. They're specially trained. That comes from other organizations yeah. like Four Paws for Patriots. So we try to connect the two together to provide service dogs. So we awesome. support Four Paws for Patriots, Wounded Warriors, so they can get good service dogs to vets who need them there you go we've had we've had uh, veteran congressmen on the show we've talked about the you know the high suicide rate of vets and and uh, yeah. and joblessness of vets and 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 dogs are such a great way to resolve a lot of that i mean i was depressed all my life before i got dogs yeah they, they kind of saved me and uh, they're just they're just so great so truly ma truly man's best friend they are because uh, they don't divorce you in divorce court they don't <laughs> It take half your shit. They might my dogs might eat half my shit. They I think my younger yeah, yeah, yeah. Siberians did that, but that was that's another thing. Well, that's being a good dog. I mean, that's, that's pretty what, much that's, that's what you're supposed to do. It's par for the course, right? <laughs> yeah. So Bill, thank you for coming on the show. We really appreciate oh, it. Give us the com one more time as we go out. Yeah, it's Carnes and Carnes dot com. Carnes with a K. There you go. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We certainly appreciate with with everyone. Go to Goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss, Chris Foss One, the Tickety Talkity, and uh, Chris Foss Facebook.com. Thanks, Thanks for tuning Chris. in. Thank yeah. you, sir. Appreciate Thank it. You. Take care. Be good to each other. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.